between September 2017 and June 2021, 205 cases of monkeypox were confirmed in Nigeria. According to virologist Uriwale Tomori, 2022 number of cases is likely to be an underrepresentation because many people have been avoiding healthcare facilities for fear of contracting COVID-19. Discussing further on monkeypox with concentration on Nigeria and Africa as a continent, we will be looking at how it is managed since it is an endemic. My guest is Dr. Adura Taiwo, a Nigeria-based medical practitioner. And I am Oluja Kemosako saying hello and thank you for always watching Let's Talk on DNC Work. But before we continue on the show today, I'd like to remind you as usual to please and please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on all of our social media platforms, and please be a share of good news by sharing all of our videos. Thank you once again for staying tuned. Thank you, Dr. Dora Taiwo, for coming on the show. It's nice having you here. Thank you for having me. Pleasure is mine. Okay. Please give an overview of monkeypox and its transmission process. Okay, thank you. Um, monkeypox is a zoonotic disease. What do I mean by zoonotic disease? A zoonotic disease is a disease that could be transmitted from animals to human beings. And um, it has three different modes of transmission. The first one, like I said, zoonotic disease, the first mode of transmission is transmission from animals to human. Most especially people that keep pets in the house. They could easily contract it from the animal they keep in the house without knowing. So the first mode of transmission is from animals to human. That makes it a zoonotic transmission. Then the second mode of transmission is from human to human. I mean, an infected human to an, a non-infected person. And the third mode of transmission is through a pregnant mother. It could easily be transmitted to the fetus through the placenta. So these are the three, basically the three modes by which this disease, this viral disease can be transmitted. Monkeypox, genetically belongs to a family called Poxy Riverdale. I don't know, it's a medical, it's, it's, it's a scientific term. And then monkeypox and smallpox, they also belong to the same gene. And this gene is called octo, octopox, octopox, that is an autopoxy auto virus, autopox virus. The reason why it is named monkeypox is because it was first discovered in a monkey. That was, um, I think, 1958, 1959. It was first discovered, the virus, the pox, was first discovered from a monkey. And that's why they named it after um, the monkey. That's why it is called monkey pox. But where at um, 1970, it was first discovered in human. It was first discovered, that virus was first discovered in human, which means it was transmitted from monkey to human. That was 1970. So the first monkeypox discovery was um, in 1970. And since then, it has been in existence. Don't forget that um, smallpox and um, monkeypox, they both belong to the same family. That's genetic family. They are different. They are different from chickenpox. Smallpox and um, uh, monkeypox, they belong to the same family and the same gene. They have the same genetical you know, characteristics. And that is why they share the same symptoms. Should I go ahead and explain the symptoms? Yes, please. Yeah. Smallpox um, presents itself. The, the same symptoms that poxmos brings about is the same symptoms that chicken um, monkeypox also presents. You understand? So without going for the proper test, you wouldn't even be able to diagnose monkeypox from um, um, smallpox. But the good thing is... Um, Monkeypox is less severe. Smallpox was life-threatening. It's still life-threatening, even before they came up with a vaccine and then, you know, some antiviral drugs to suppress the, you know, replication of the virus in the body. But the good thing is monkeypox is less severe. And the symptoms I'm talking about is um, fever, chills, body ache, muscle ache, 
soreness of the mouth, of the genital parts, face, the leg, you find sores all over. And these um, symptoms, it takes about three periods. There are about three periods for these um, um, symptoms to come up, as in to occur. We have the invasion period and the incubation period. The incubation period is the period, um, the period between when the virus was contacted before the manifestation of the symptoms. That's the incubation period. That's the first period when you get contracted with this virus. It takes some days before the symptoms start manifesting. By the time the symptoms begin to manifest, that is the period we call invasion period. Then the invasion period, after the invasion period, that is when you now have the third period, which is the eruption of the rashes and all that. That's the last stage. And this symptoms takes about two to four weeks, you know, before you can just get over. But the good thing is we have um, um, drugs that can actually take care of this chicky and these monkey pox. Those are the drugs that have been used to curtail the spread of smallpox in the past because there are no treatments. There is no specific treatment to take off this virus. But because smallpox, we have overcome smallpox over time, we can actually go through the process of treating smallpox to eradicate monkeypox as well. And that is why if, uh, we need painkillers like ibuprofen to, you know, to control the pains, the muscle pains, the pain and everything that we need uh, um, some drugs that will take care of the fever. Once these two things are then managed well, other factors, other symptoms can easily be eradicated. Okay. Should Nigerians be worried about this virus? Um, Nigeria should be worried, and at the same time, I can say they shouldn't be worried because, on a on a on a on a more serious note, this um, monkeypox, fine, is a viral disease, but I don't. It is not as you know, it is not as terrible as um, other viruses that we have overcome in the past. It is not as terrible as COVID nineteen. It is not as terrible as smallpox that I've just explained. But um, the thing is, you know, in everything you need to be careful and you need to follow some kind of procedures. And I'm I'm glad that NCDC, that's the Nigerian Center for Disease and Control Prevention, they've come up with activated centers to isolate anyone who is giving out symptoms of this monkeypox, so that they can easily control the spread of this um, disease. Um, Nigeria should not really, really, really be because there are so many rumors going on now that ah, this thing is going to kill us. Maybe they are going to have another lockdown. No, no, no. It's not like that. It's not as serious as the other um, family of um, pox that I've just mentioned, smallpox and some other, you understand, but it is still manageable. It can still be prevented and it can still be, can still be managed if you follow the procedures as in the preventive measures. If we put them in place, we can easily overcome it. So there's no fear, there's no cause for alarm. There's nothing to fear about. It's just to know what and what not to do. Okay, we know that Nigerians are mostly nonchalant about some of these things. Well, maybe because of the local concussions that we've had, you know, all these that go and all that we've over time have taken, you know, and um, so many things like that. They could even turn it into a, a joke, something funny just to ease themselves of the tension. And you said they shouldn't be worried. We know about the COVID-19, that most people don't even want to follow the guidelines. The reason why I said we should not be worried because even without, you know, like as I'm talking to you now, there are so a, a lot of rumors have gone, have come up, have been spreading over this chinking pox of everything. And you know, you know, let me just say for instance, HIV then, when HIV just came, you know, just started spreading. You know, anyone with HIV just accepts that this is the end of the world, death sentence. But now we have people living with HIV, living very quality life with HIV. That is why I said there is no, there is nothing to be worried and then to be fearful about. It can be managed. And um, as you said, that the people in the rural area, even there are some people in the urban areas that have this nonchalant attitude. You understand? The only thing that we can we can do to improve the situation of things is just to have this public health awareness. Let people go out, let, um, um, let there be public health awareness in the markets, in the, you know, anywhere that we can gather people and just tell them these are the do's and don'ts of, um, you know, these diseases and that's it. 
That's why I said Nigerians should not be worried because by the time we start worrying about, you see people, once they hear that somebody contacted um, HIV, they will start isolating from such people and those kind of people will start, you know, getting worried and before you know it, they start losing their lives like that. And that was why I mentioned HIV initially. We have people living with HIV, the virus. We have them living very quality lives. Now, as long as they are taking their drugs to suppress the, you know, the replication of the virus. So the same applies to this monkeypox. Anyone with monkeypox should not see it as a death sentence. You understand? It's just for you to get tested and, you know, take care of yourself, get yourself isolated and do all the preventive measures and you'll be fine. That's why I said Nigerians should not be worried. All right. Now let's look at the implications of monkeypox in Nigeria in Africa by extension. Like I said, actually this monkeypox is... um. Mm, I, I think it emanated from Africa, Central Africa and West Africa. But gradually, it's already moving to even the, uh, it's touching the whole world now, the way it's going. So the implication on, um, on Nigeria is just that it's going to affect a lot of things. It's going to, uh, it has affected a lot of things, actually. And the fact that our health sector in the Nigeria is not so, you know, so solid to, 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 solve this situation and to you understand so what i what i would say is the implication is ash on the economy because the governments at large they are not even encouraging us to go to the healthcare system there because some people will go walk into a healthcare facility they will go there with headache and by the time they are coming back they are coming back with multiple you know multiple infections multiple disease multiple so i think the implication here now is that anyone who contacts this um, monkeypox without awareness without um without a full knowledge of the of the disease can actually lose his life and then start spreading to other people and that is why i said the issue of um um, public awareness should be very, very of utmost. It should, should, it should be of utmost importance. As in, public awareness should be, you know, should be should be encouraged and should spread all around the cities, even the rural areas, so that at least once this once someone contracted, the issue of isolating, quarantining should not be a big deal. But because of the fear of the unknown, people will re rather stay in their home and you take care of themselves. And before you know it, it starts spreading. Thank you so much for that. Let's quickly go on this break. And when we come back, we can do the web stuff. Please stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, the program is Let's Talk on DNC Work. And I've been speaking with Dr. Adura Taiwo, a Nigeria based medical practitioner. And the topic has been monkeypox and the management in Nigeria, how it is being managed in Nigeria. Well, so far, a lot, of, a lot has been said. And if you're just joining us, you need to actually continue with us and stay till the end. So you can actually get the best of it and you can always go back to watch the program from the beginning on youtube again all right thank you so much dr adura for standing by thank you you're welcome now you were talking about the pre precautionary measures that could be put in place by nigerians to avoid uh, the spread of this um, virus now would you expatiate more on other things, the place of governments, the place of uh, doctors, hospitals, and schools, everything, all stakeholders, what can we all do to actually ensure that this will not be um, something that will be like COVID and be killing people every day? Thank you very much. I'll start from what we consume. When we go to the market to get our meats, I want us to start by cooking our meat adequately. 
it should cook it so well so that even if the animal we are cooking the meat we are cooking has been you know has contracted virus when we cook it adequately the virus will be eliminated and so we won't be consuming disease we won't be consuming a viral infected animal then coming in close contact with sick people we don't know the kind of sickness they have we just know that they are sick so i would advise that we are visiting any sick ones we should try and take all this we use our mask we wash our hands we don't come in contact with anyone that is sick and also we shouldn't we should advise okay in schools we should advise that sharp objects should not be shared among the students because um monkey pus is has really presented itself through fluids through body fluids it can easily be contracted through it's, it can be sexually transmitted as well because body fluids you can actually get the fluid also from sexual activities so we should prevent blood you know coming in contact with, and you know monkey pus comes with um, um rashes and the rashes over time opens up and then start bleeding and so we shouldn't come in contact with lesions of somebody that is sick whether we know is monkeypox or whatever we should try as much as possible to stay away from people like that not isolating not total isolation but at least prevent yourself wear your mask wash your hands on a regular and do not share sharp objects then there are some antiviral drugs also that um, could be taken by an infected mother an infected um pregnant woman that should be taken so that it will not affect the baby it will not cause a congenital you know congenital birth so the fetus will not be affected with this virus those are the things that should be put in place and our hospitals also should take time to do those necessary tests for everyone visiting the clinic such that once this virus is detected in a person the person will be isolated will be taken care of by the ncdc that is why they have activated centers all around we should not say because we are going to the hospital doctors just uh, did um, um white blood cell count just blood count test or just do some simple tests and just believe that every other aspect is okay no they should run a general body test because all these things are interrelated some symptoms can can show you can you can some symptoms in the body can actually present itself as malaria and this malaria symptoms also is associated it's intertwined with this um monkey pox of it so we should try and do full proper medical examination before releasing a patient out of the hospital so that's all i have to say then the government also should like sensitize you know children i i know i know i know of a family that got infected with covid by their daughter the daughter went to school contracted covid and brought it home you understand so these are the things that we need you know to 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 put in place in this country children when they go to school let them say let them see it as a norm to wash your hands then use your mask regardless of what is happening around you make sure your mask is there especially when you are going to the public you will use your mask you wash your hands and you make sure that you don't have body contact with people that are sick or people that are just recovering then we talk of those that keep pets in the house when they take their pets out to a veterinary doctor for treatment or whatever they should also be careful because you don't know the kind of animals you are going there to mingle with when you get there you meet several animals lying down with different ailments you wouldn't know why they are there and you know this um um monkey pox that we are talking about it is much more presented in animals so when we are taking care of our pets we should be careful on how to release them to you know to the environment how to keep our environment clean so that we are keeping pets in the house we won't as in, we, we are keeping pets in our house we'll be safe and bringing pets into the home shouldn't be um another danger for us so that's all and then one thing is um there are antiviral drugs that were used to curtail the spread of uh, smallpox and they are still very much available in the market so and smallpox is more severe even more life-threatening than monkeypox so anyone that is presented with this monkeypox should be able to you know go to the pharmacy get these drugs that were used to you know to suppress the replication of the virus um in monkeypox in smallpox they can actually go to the pharmacy get those drugs to suppress the viral vi virus from replicating in the body and that's it okay thank you so much now generally as a continent 
How is it being managed compared to the developed nations? That is why we have the World Health Organization with different bodies handling those things. That's why it is not now a Nigerian or an, an African thing. It is not a world thing. So from World Health Organization, we are getting information. We are going for meetings, seminars. We are going for, you know, different kind of, a different sort of um, sessions, how to curb this uh, monkeypox of a thing generally because if we focus more on nigeria on africa people are trapped people are migrating people are moving around so if we say it's only in africa what if an african now decides to you know relocate to any other part of the world so that is why world health organization has come in place and has made sure that every every continent every country have their um activated centers to curb the spread of this um virus and that's uh, the first isolated, the first um, um, isolated, yeah, isolated center that was um, erected in Nigeria was in Abuja. It was erected the uh, NCDC. We have it there. It's an activated center. Once you are, you are, you have this, you are exposed to these symptoms. <laughs> you are free to walk in there. But the thing is, we need to be encouraged that it is not the end of the world. It is not a dead sentence. Once you find yourself bringing out, manifesting these symptoms, feel free to walk into any of these. Um, centers that has been activated by NCDC and get tested. Thank you so much. Any final word? Yeah, I believe uh, in everything we need to do, we need to play our role, even, you know, we need to be our own doctors even before going to the hospital. So the only, the best way to approach this um, virus is just to be careful, know how to, you know, to handle yourself, know how you relate, know how and how to, you know, even in the public, just take care of yourself before, you know, before moving out. So if you are if you are facing if you are experiencing any form of symptoms, whether it's monkeypox or not, don't take don't 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 be nonchalant about it. Feel free to walk into a laboratory, get tested, and then you'll be fine. That's all. Thank you so so much, Dr. Adira Tayo, for this um, knowledge of uh, that you just shared with us. Thank you once again, and uh, I pray that such will not be found in our domain in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Okay, on, and to you out there, thank you too for being part of the show. It's nice knowing that you are always there to watch us. And until next time when I come your way again with another topic, I remain in the Jacqueline Circle. Bye for now.